Good evening, folks, and welcome to Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Al, along with my partner, Robert. Um, we have the honor and pleasure of having with us again Lorelei Oviat, the director of the planning department for the county. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me back. <clears throat> oh, our pleasure. Definitely our pleasure. Uh, for those of you that maybe didn't get our news flash what, that we played Monday and Tuesday, if it, I think they did, yes. Uh, there was a short meeting down at City Council <laughs> uh, yesterday afternoon. The uh, Board of uh, Supervisors came over and held a hearing on the land management plan. Uh, and some of you didn't get the, the, the news flash. No. I, because there, there was a meeting at 1 for those that were uh, opposed to it. And then at 7 o'clock last night, those that were in favor of it were supposed to show up. Right. <laughs> And they didn't hear the second part of the message. No. So everybody showed up. Everybody at showed up. And, and uh, to have a meeting um, of public testimony that went on for over six hours. That's right. Uh, Unbelievable. And, and then, of course, the supervisors uh, um, had their, what they needed to say, and that went for almost an hour itself. Mm -hmm. So I was amazed at, at how long it went. And, and uh, I have to say that that I was completely um, impressed uh, with the um, professionalism, with the tolerance, with the um, way that the supervisors conducted the meeting. Um, and I was also, as I sat there during this short period of time, um, I was also extremely impressed with your and your staff's preparedness and with your expertise. Um, and I know that you got a lot of compliments from the, um, both people who supported the plan and those who opposed the plan. And I just want to say that, in my opinion, all those compliments were absolutely well deserved. Yes. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, <clears throat> I also was thinking at the time, when I worked for the Department of the Navy and I was a an auditor um, visiting companies and at the time there was the um, uh, laughably said uh, expression of we're from the government and we're here to help you right <laughs> and nobody believed that and it was it was my goal at the time to at least make a dent in that and change that and to have people feel like you know you really were helpful Right. And and I think that you did a fabulous job of exemplifying that and helping to change people's opinion that there are government agencies that can honestly have that as their mantra because <clears throat> they really are there to help you. You know, I think I'm going to blush. I mean, this is just really wonderful hearing. And I think one of the things that my staff and all of the county government remembers is you go to the Department of Motor Vehicles and people have stories. Yes. They go to the Social Security Office and people have stories. I only want the stories that come out of the Planning and Community Development Department to be, well, you didn't agree with what I wanted to do, but I was respected. I was listened to. Someone talked to me about my issues. I didn't have to leave 14 messages. I wasn't shunted off to take a number because we can't always give people what they want. We can't always uh, help them with what they want. But we can certainly explain the rules. We can help them think through other options and other alternatives. Uh, maybe you could try this. And most importantly, we're their government. They, we, they, we work I, for them, and I, we want to make sure that they're <clears throat> taken care of. I, I laugh <laughs> because, in my opinion, there are so few members of our government that seem to think that way anymore. Yeah, so uh, um, it was not towards you. It was, it was just, I wish that everybody could take a lesson from you. I appreciate that. You know, the board uh, uh, always is like that, by the way. It wasn't just that they were visiting kind of out of town. I'm proud to say that even down at the big Truxton, every Tuesday they have an all-day board meeting, a morning session, afternoon session. Most of my items are on the afternoon session, so they're tired by then. They uh, don't work on their laptops. They don't 
take notes, you know, from their field reps and whisper like they do in, in L.A. They don't, you know, play <clears> with <throat> their phones. They're actually listening to the comments, and I, uh, I'm proud to work for them because of that. And I think they set the tone. I think our leaders need to set the tone. Well, they set the bar high last yeah, night. Yeah, they set the bar extremely high. Um, there are a few organizations here in Ridgecrest that I wish would watch that six hours or seven hours total right. um, and take lessons from it. Um, they they uh, sometimes try but don't meet that kind of level that was displayed yesterday. Uh, I, I just can't compliment the Board of Supervisors enough. Both, and, both and Robert and I had anticipated going down there uh, yesterday. The meeting started at 1, and we figured yeah. it'll be over yeah, by 3. Yeah, here at 3. Yeah. 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 I was know, predicting 6. They're going to limit people six. to 2 minutes really? or well, 1 <laughs> minute or whatever, Yeah. and yeah. The, they'll be out of here by 3. And uh, when the chair, Mr. Chow, uh, couch. Couch. couch, Chairman Couch. 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 Sorry, right. boy, was he terrific. <clears throat> yeah. He did an outstanding job. Right. Yeah. I mean, District not that four. the other council members mm -hmm. didn't, but he. <clears throat> and uh, wow, I was just totally impressed. Um, you know, one of the things that I had told some of the board members is that, that the level of great comments out here is very high as well. I mean, you know, I go to a lot of these public hearings. Well, I sit through a lot of them. <laughs> the comments out here are very involved. They're intelligent. They're on point. They try and bring forward. Uh, we got a lot of new ideas yesterday, and that was one of the things that the board at the end commented on, a lot mm -hmm. of new ideas. You know, many times we go to these kinds of hearings. What we hear is people standing up and saying, just say no. Well, you can say that, and we respect that. But when you have an engaged community like this, it makes the process better. It's a better process when people engage with their government, when they feel safe to engage with their government, that yes. they're not going to be ridiculed, they're not going to be cut off. And, um, you know, so I guess I'd also set the board up for, uh, this is a really dynamic, involved community. And this has been a really great process. So they also came with expectations, and I think your community delivered. Thank you. I'm well, glad that they fortunately, did. we're going to have to go to break here in just a few seconds. Um, we'll be back with more with Lorelai Oviat. We're talking about the supervisors' meeting yesterday. Join us. And welcome back to our second segment uh, here on Ridgecrest Talk, the Thursday evening edition. Um, we're speaking with uh, Lorelai Ovia, the director of the planning department um, out of Bakersfield. And uh, she and her um, talented um, team, staff. team, there you go, thank team. you, um, were over here yesterday and, and uh, sat through uh, as well as the supervisors did, a seven-hour meeting, six hours uh, of uh, public, public testimony, and uh, um, we were just discussing that meeting. So, uh, yeah, It was very impressive. Uh, <clears throat> I was surprised. I guess the only one that didn't have a can underneath the, the dais up there was uh, Supervisor Perez, because she had to get up a couple, three times to make a run, but the rest must have had cans underneath there because none of them. I saw. I saw a couple of the others. Oh, okay. Get I didn't see but, it. but the other thing that I that I saw, <laughs> and, and I think we mentioned it already, but uh, they didn't just uh, endure the six hours right. no, they, uh, public testimony. They paid attention to that six hours of testimony, and and took notes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, right. um, clearly a number of them took notes. One of them, uh, what twelve pages. That's right. And, and, and it was always the case, and these are totally unfamiliar people, um, um, Chairman Couch uh, always was able to thank 
the oh, yeah. speaker by name. Right. Um, uh, and uh, anyway, it just was a, a very pleasant experience. I will tell you that that board does keep department heads on their toes, though. You'll notice that I was working furiously to make sure that I could <laughs> answer those questions because I know this board. This board uh, takes notes, and then at the end, they're going to turn to me and say, okay, you know, what about these things? So I obviously have worked with the board uh, and been, you know, done this. Uh, so I knew that just saying, I'm going to get back to you later is not what they wanted. There were right. people there who had legitimate you questions. You know how many times we've heard that over Exactly. Here. <laughs> and there were legitimate people there who wanted to know, is my property being changed? What What's the final say on this? And so I actually have an extraordinary team with Craig Murphy and Ross Furman. And, you know, we have trained ourselves that... Uh, the public took their time to come down here, took time off of work, took time off of school, even if it's in the evenings. Right. And they had legitimate questions. There's nothing more frustrating for them to then get up, get the courage to talk, and then nobody says anything about them. They don't mm -hmm. get any feedback on their personal issue. And mm -hmm. that's not how we operate. That we operate that, you know, even in Bakersfield, we'll talk to them afterwards. Yeah, if I we noticed. see they're leaving, I kept sending my staff down because people right. were leaving and I wanted him to catch them. Now, you know, some of them are philosophical questions. I'm not necessarily going to send my staff out to engage in philosophical questions. But somebody had questions about their property. What's happening? Is it changing? Is it not changing? I didn't understand this. So, uh, and I love that the board empowers me to do that. I love that they want my staff to jump up and run down, that they're not concerned more with decorum or some other kind of thing. Mm. They want service. They are a service leadership, and uh, it's, it's a very high bar. It's a high bar with 900,000 residents or 890,000 residents in Kern County, but we try. You did an excellent we job. Excellent job, yeah. Uh, uh, also, it. we saw, and I think you wanted to talk about this, I don't know if we'll get through all of it in this segment, but uh, as we've seen, because uh, we've talked about the land management plan, the right. EIR, right. ever since it broke right. mm -hmm. back in February, mm -hmm. um, every Thursday night, that's what we've talked about. We've had okay. different guests on. Okay. From the water district manager. Uh, Five times. Yeah. <clears throat> to city uh, officials. And Two. property owners. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> and what we saw, and, and I'm sure you've seen it because of the two uh, special meetings that we had here, Whew. the split right down almost the middle of the community on mm -hmm. this. Well, you know, I really... And that's what a lot of us are... are Really right. In, right. uncomfortable with. Yeah. Well, I want to distinguish, there's actually parts to this. I think the... Uh, adoption of the ACUS into the airport land use plan has a few people who are concerned about, but yes. it's not as divisive an issue. No, not at all. I think the uh, landscaping, I think, seems to be a good idea that yeah, people like. Has a problem yes. with and I think that this this little dust thing to handle our situation in the zoning ordinance. Again, no real problem. And, and, you know, maybe we should rezone the BLM open space so when you look at the maps, you don't think it's all privately yes. owned yeah, in the military. I don't think anybody has So I think one of the things that's going to that. happen on Tuesday is that we're going to distinguish. The board could take action on all of those things and not take action on other things. Mm -hmm. It's not a package oh, deal. Okay, good. So I'm I want to make that. sure that, you know, we know that, but I wanted to make sure that everybody publicly knows that, that we'll have it broken down so the board can do that. And then the board threw a hook last night at the end. Yes, they which did. Which is why I try to stay awake through these things, is you never know what they're going to say at the end. Which is, and we'd also like to discuss this idea of an urgency ordinance to stop water well permitting either on just ag wells or all wells. So that was completely unexpected. It was a suggestion from some of the people in the community who think it's a better option than mm -hmm. uh, the rezone. And so we'll have a conversation about that on Tuesday. What, what if... <clears throat> that's the way they want to look. I, you're not prepared, you told them to give that presentation Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But what if that's something they want to consider? How long? They have to come back and we have to do a noticing, but we could come back with it in as fast as two weeks. Okay. And then they do an, ur an urgency ordinance, has certain findings. It takes, it's in place for 45 <coughs> days. Then you have to come back to a public hearing again and it's good for, I think, 10 months. 
then you have to do another public hearing that's good for two years. Right. And, and you have to make certain findings of uh, public health and safety and some other findings that would have to be. And we would be involving <coughs> Matt Constantine from who runs public health, who runs in the environmental health division. And he the, does that permitting. Michelle that Anderson me. involved with the wells? No. The Kern County no. Water Agency is just like a uh, helper, just like a oh. technical. <clears throat> so the, the jurisdiction is under public health in the county. I also wanted to comment uh, your uh, legal counsel. Uh, uh -huh. Gold Teresa Goldner. Goldner. Again, um, did she ever set the bar high? <laughs> she was explanatory. She was um, um, concise, but, but like I said, made sure everybody understood. She clearly knows what she's talking about. I disagree with her some, on some points, right. but that doesn't matter. But she explained it to the, the public. And so they might be in a position, of, oh, I disagree, but it wasn't this, well, the county has the ability to do this. And, that and Robert will end. talk about this more when we come back after our break, because we have to take a break again. Join us when we come back. Welcome back. Uh, Rich Crest Talk, Thursday Night Edition. I'm Al, along with my partner Robert, and again, our special guest, Laura Lyalvia from the County Planning Department, the director over there, uh, runs a tight ship. A good, yes. Yeah. Excellent. And if you didn't make it down to the meeting yesterday, which, like I said, six hours, seven hours almost. Seven hours total. Um, you would have been blown away. It, it was absolutely the best, I have to say this without any reservations, the best meeting I've ever attended since I've been here in Ridgecrest. Well, I attended yeah. a meeting a while back that talked about wine, women, and song. I was, oh, well, I see what you mean, relative to a government The way it meeting. was conducted. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that we're, you know we're not in favor of the land right. management plan. But, right. Uh, no, that was a very well conducted meeting. Uh, yes, it was. <clears throat> um, so. One, one point that I want to make. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And Al mentioned it earlier, how divisive this whole right. thing has been. We have very strong opinions on both sides. Right. Um, the part that worries me, um, if the supervisors pass this, mm -hmm. um, it will kind of be like, to me, the Kelo decision. It will be like the Supreme Court decision on Obamacare. It will be like discussing abortion. It will be like discussing the death penalty. You Will that divisiveness um, um, will stay with the community, and I don't think it's anything that can ever be mended. The advantage, in my opinion, of not passing this is that that will be a painful experience for people on both sides, but it will go away. And um, hmm. if we uh, utilize the non-permanent solution or even some other solution, um, again, whether it be a well moratorium or some other approach that says um, we can't have a situation where uh, large ag comes in and takes over a lot of property and therefore goes to using a lot of water but something that doesn't impact um, some people at the, um, for the benefit of other people, I think that we can mend the community back together and get a um, good approach <coughs> when the GSA forms and, and stands up and does the thing that they need to do. My concern is with this passing, you will have so tainted the waters, so to speak, um, that you'll never get that. You won't get the good community involvement, and, and I, this is not trying to put down the community, I'm just saying that you're gonna have such bitter feelings 
that I don't think it will be as productive and it will take longer to get that productive nature back for the, for the GSAs. And that's one of my biggest um, worries about this. Right. Uh, so I think that's interesting. Obviously I've been a planner for a long, long time. So I've been through kind of bitter debates and what happens afterwards. I'm not sure that a well moratorium won't cause the same kinds of things because what people are forgetting is that many of those small lots that are doing commercial, whatever they're doing, also need agricultural wells. Mm -hmm. So agricultural wells just, if you put a moratorium on agricultural wells, that doesn't just affect what people are thinking of as the big people. It also affects the small people. And when you're talking about touching people's water wells, that is even more my experience at talking to people, and we tried an urgency ordinance. Just want to remind you, we did oh, try yes, one. Oh, yes, I know, I know. So the reaction. So I am uh, an open-minded of where the board wants to go. Uh, I would say that I am going to aggressively follow up on, uh, uh, on the ideas about using rolled curb. Let's get different kinds of right. road improvements. Right. That sounded like a good and idea. And I think those are excellent <clears throat> ideas. And so I'm not, I'm not sure, but in my planning experience, um, I agree that there can be divisive issues. One of the things that has helped is this kind of open conversation. Divisive issues where they're kind of underground are worse in the long term. Yeah, correct. So it's been really helpful. If people helpful. hadn't come forward. Yeah, if people hadn't come forward, if the board hadn't been respectful, if my staff hadn't treated them well, mm -hmm. that could have been even yes. worse, right? So we have that grounding. But I'm still not clear that a, a and, and once again, we are talking about just the rezoning of the 22,000 and some 232 acres of undeveloped land from A. We're not talking about some of the other things that could be useful, like the zero scape landscape. Yes. Once again, the board could take action on the rest of the things that aren't controversial and not do that. So they right. don't have to do the whole thing as a package. They could also do this well moratorium instead. I think there's going to be a lot of debate about a well moratorium. Yeah. Uh, I, I, there's going to be a I lot of debate. Will be. I, I and, agree with and, you. And, and, and I, I have think, to say, uh, yeah. I was adamantly opposed to the well moratorium right. when it was six months ago. Right. However, through this process and hearing well, all of the discussion from, quote, the other side, right. they have opened my eyes, convinced me uh, that know. maybe that's a good idea. And, and so the reason I bring that up is, to me, that's so much more temporary. It's okay. so much... It addresses the water issue. Well, it addresses directly. the water issue. Then, then if, if that's how you feel and how other people feel, then I consider the process completely worth it. Because yes. the whole point of a process like this is not, as some people thought, to push an agenda. The only agenda here is, is what are we going to do about water? Here's one tool. If this is the wrong tool, then what tools would you, wait, would you like? And I would say that back in 2011, there was not that acknowledgement that perhaps there was a something that should be done in 2011 when we originally started this conversation so to me as a planner whatever happens then the system's a success if we I know engendered you were a figuring, debate boy after tuesday this will be behind me and i'm done with it <laughs> <laughs> i did have that thought <laughs> you know i'm working on a few other things like trying to streamline oil and gas permitting so the oil oh, industry yeah, can continue moving absolutely. forward and and, you have that retirement state, paper still on the desk, though, You know, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I try really hard to uh, remember that, uh, which is what I'm committed to. I'm always committed more to the process. Uh, here's what a bureaucrat is. Ten seconds. A bureaucrat, a bureaucrat is someone who's more interested in the process than the result. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Right? I'm interested Would in the result. Okay. Would you consider uh, staying on with us a little bit longer and sure. doing some more? Uh, sure conversation about this? Absolutely. Can we do that? I make the command decision, yes. All right. <laughs>